Thank you, Lord. That song about God being unshakable, unmovable, that moved me. It took me to another realm. Because when you really think about the God that we serve, Hallelujah. when you think about what he's done for you, when you think about what he's yet to do, what he's about to do, when you think about the healing in your body, when you think about, when you think about how you know, uh, everything, every crooked way is straight. When you think about how he's provided, yes. we truly serve an unshakable God. Yes. We truly serve yes. a God that plants us. We truly serve a God that, oh man, I'm, I'm just at a loss for words. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm just at a loss Thank for you. words. When we think yes. about the God yes, we serve, sir. it gives us hope. Yes, sir. Yes. It gives us hope. Yes, Lord. Hope beyond measure. Amen. Unthinkable hope. Yes. Unshakable oh. hope. Yes. Un My God. You know, unrearrangeable hope. Just the hope that just keeps you steadfast. How many of y'all are glad for that Hallelujah. hope? Hallelujah. How many of y'all are thankful for thank that hope? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That hope. Yes, Lord. Just thank, you. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your mouth. When everything else tries to change, our God remains the same. Bye, 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 bye. The same God yesterday, today, and forever more. What a God. What a mighty God yes, we serve. Yes, yes. What a mighty what God, a God we serve. God. Angels God. bow before God. him. God. Heaven and earth yes. adore him. What a mighty God yes, yes. we serve. Yes. Wow. Yes. One, one breath from his nostrils. One Word other uttered out of his mouth, this whole uniform or universe was put in place. Yes. What a mighty God oh, we serve. God. God. One one flick of his finger, every yes. demon who leaves and goes into oh, hiding. He doesn't God. even have to stop. All he has to do is look and yes. things change. And we have the same power on the inside of us to speak to the elements. We have the same power on the inside of us to speak to that mountain. All we need is a faith as big as a mustard seed and we speak to that mountain and all of Mount Everest will start moving out of the way. Every single mountain range will move out the way. That's the type of God we serve. We serve a God that makes every way plain, that guides our feet. We serve a God that just makes everything like New. We serve a God that washes us and cleanses yeah. from all unrighteousness. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You should be on your feet and shouting on the top of your lungs because we serve a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah for the God, the God Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a mighty God, a peaceful God, a loving God, a powerful God, an unchanging God, a relenting God, a jealous God, a God that covers us, a God that pushes back every stone. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Mighty God. Every other God is a fake God. We serve the one and only true and living God. I don't care how many gods come up in this land that for me and my house and light it up church, we will serve the Lord, the one and only true and living God. I don't care what anybody else says. I serve a mighty God. I don't care what the situation may be presented to in front of me. I serve a mighty God. I don't care what 
report I get about my body. I serve Almighty God. I don't care how my bank account looks. I serve Almighty God. I don't care what the job situation looks like. I serve Almighty God. And even when, even if we're in a society that is hopeless, we have we are full of hope because we serve Almighty God, a God that uh, we serve a God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knew this was going to take place. We serve Almighty God. We serve Almighty God. I don't care what society says now. I don't care if we're in the season of apostasy. We serve a mighty God. And I'm going to stand flat footed. I'm going to stand firm and be secure. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be swaying from side to side. I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word because I know what my God has said 2,000 years ago. I know what he said ever since the beginning of time. I I know every result that he has put a stamp on every report put in the atmosphere. I don't care what Satan is doing. Satan thinks he has the last laugh. But think again, devil. You are under our feet. That's why I'm talking to you like this. Because you're beneath me. Because I serve a mighty God. Amen. 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 I serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. I serve a mighty God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I serve Almighty God. Do you? Glory to your Do you? Ask your neighbor to the left and to the right of you. Do you serve Almighty God? Ask that angel in front of you and the back of you. Do you serve Almighty God? Do you serve Almighty God? Do you serve? Do you serve? We should be so sure in our faith in Him, even if the angel Gabriel decided to turn the other way. We will not be bamboozled. We will not be dismayed. We will stand flat-footed because we serve Almighty God. A mighty God. A powerful God. A God that splits waters. Come on. Come on. That's the type of God that we serve. A God that speaks to your organs and it regrows. That's the mighty God we serve. You may have an organ transplant, but guess what? This is how powerful your God is. He made that organ that used to be foreign. Now it was part of your body because that's the type of God that you serve. There will be no rejection from what he does. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, I had to stay there just for a little bit. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of Hallelujah. 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 Did you cast your ballot on the Lord last week? Yeah, yeah. Come on, I can't hear you. Did you yeah, cast yeah. your ballot on the Lord? Yeah. God sent a very clear cut question. Whose ballot are you going to cast? Are you going to put a check next to Jesus? Are you going to put a check next to Baal? Whose side are you on? There's a clear cut division. Are you on my side or are you on the Lord or on the devil's side? But whatever you do, do not be a fence straddler. Are there any fence straddlers in here? I don't think so. Raise your hand if you're on the side of the Lord. You're on the side of the one and only true and living God. You're on the side of the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We, will, we are the ones who will serve Christ instead of sin. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Take out your Bibles, your cell phones, your iPads, whatever. I want you to hold it up in the air. I want you to repeat after me. Hallelujah. Say this word. This word is for me. This word. This word is a seed. This word is planted. This word will grow for me to use and partake of. This word is alive. This word is powerful. If you believe that, give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this word.
I yield my members unto righteousness and unto holiness. Every word that proceeded out of my mouth will only come from you. I gladly take myself out the way and the Holy Spirit take control. The word that's about to come forth is for all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, wash me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, no words that are going to be presented will be perverted. In the name of Jesus, it'll come straight from the mouth of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am pressing. My back is healed. Satan tried to attack me last night with huge, sharp back pains, but I kept on uh, rebuking the enemy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I press toward the mark of the high cow calling. My back is in alignment. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We're going to read from 2 Corinthians. Everybody say Corinthians. Corinthians. So let me just go ahead and set the stage. I choose to believe that this word is going to bless you. Amen. Yeah, I choose to believe that this word is going to bless you. Amen. So in 2 Corinthians, you have the Apostle Paul. He was going through some great tribulation in the Asia province or the Asian province. Uh, he was receiving persecution from every side, amen? Mm -hmm. Not only was he receiving persecution from the secular side, <clears throat> not, uh, you have the kings and rulers over there that were governing the country. Not only was he receiving persecution from that side, but he was also receiving persecution from the so-called church in that area. A lot of mixed signals were going forth. A lot of opinions were going forth. A lot of uh, convoluted information about Paul was going forth. So he wrote a letter to the church in Corinth because he wanted to set the record straight. Raise your hand if you believe that there's a lot of mixed signals going out right now. There's a lot of mixed signals. There's a lot of noise going on. Not white noise, just a lot of static noise. The church is trying to broadcast a signal and sometimes that signal gets blocked. Every other denomination or every other sect whether it be the political arena or, or uh, the TV arena or the music arena, there are signals that are being broadcasted and they're colliding and they're convoluted. Uh, they're convoluting each other. So we live in a day and age that we must get rid of the haze. We must get rid of the noise. We must get rid of the static. You must turn on your spiritual radio and have the Holy Spirit just fine tune those frequencies because more than ever before, you need to hear hear from God. More than ever before, not only do you need to hear information, you need to hear the truth of the matter. More than ever before, you need to look past people and look at principle because it's the principle that's going to stand. It's the principle that's going to uh, give you results. People are just a mad. People will always bamboozle you, but it's the principle. You, all, you have got to look at that principle and if it's a godly principle, it's a sure foundation. It'll never come back known and void. It'll It'll never be false because we serve a God that cannot lie. We must take away the noise. So Paul was in Asia. There was a lot of noise going on and he put himself in a situation where he had to take away the noise. Are you with me? And then he knew that the church of Corinth was going through the same persecution. So he wrote a letter to remind them who, uh, whose hope they have. Whom do they have their hope in? Are y'all with me? Where do their hope lie? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to read verses 6 through 11. I promise you this is going to bless your soul. Come on, get ready. I know y'all are ready. Are y'all with me? Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 6 through 11. I set the stage. This is Apostle Paul. And this is what he was saying in his letter. It says in verse 6, If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance 
for the same sufferings we suffer. I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm built for this thing. Loud and clear, I'm built for this thing. Verse 7, and our hope. Everybody say, our hope. Loud and clear, our hope. For you is firm because we know. Everybody say, we know. Say, our hope. We know. For because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, also you will share in our comfort. Verse 8. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experience in the province of Asia. We are under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despise life itself. Verse 9. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. Everybody say, on God. On God. Loud and clear, on God. on God. Who raises the dead. How many of y'all believe that we serve a God that has a power to raise the dead? A lot of dead situations are being presented. He doesn't want us to be bamboozled or confused. He doesn't want us to be misinformed by convoluted messages that are going forth. But you know what? We're going through this persecution because... Because he is putting us in a situation that we are relying not on ourselves, but a lie of relying on God. Everybody say, on God. Oh Verse 10, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril. He will deliver us again. On him. Everybody say, on him. On him. We have set our hope. Everybody say, our hope. Our hope. That we, he will continue to deliver us as you help us in your prayers. Then many will will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted to us in the answering of the prayers of many. Are you praying? Are you steadfast? Are you bombarding heaven? No matter what persecution may be coming our way, he is putting us in a situation that we are relying on him and not on ourselves because he is the one that has given us the power. He is the one that is standing with us. He is the one that is making the way. He is the one when our flesh might be weak. He is making us strong. So I don't want you to be dismayed because whatever situation you are going through, he is putting at to give us just a little bit more endurance. Just giving us a little bit more patience. I want you to high five three people all around you and that angel in the back and say our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. Tell everybody, our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. Hallelujah. Our hope is in God. Daddy Cross, your hope is in God. If you believe that, Jojo, our hope is in God. If you believe that, give God a shout and a hand clap of praise. Our hope is in God. Our hope, our hope, our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. I sound like a broken record, but I feel the Spirit of the Lord told me we need to be reminded that our hope is in God. Our hope is in nobody else but the one and only true and living God. Our hope is in Jehovah Jireh. Our hope is the God of I am that I am. Anything that he needs you to be, he, he, that you need him to be, he will be for you in the season that you need him in. He, is a, he has an omnipresent name, omnipotent name. Even the names Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah Rapha, even those names limit him. He said, I am that I am. That is my name. So whatever thing, everything or whatever you need for me to be, I will be for you in the situation you're in. So don't limit me by the name because I serve a powerful God. Whatever situation, I will conform to it because I will give you the power to be delivered and break through. That's the same type of God we serve. That's the type of God we serve. Do you hear me, Facebook? That's the type of God we serve. We serve a God that can manipulate any situation. We're not praising Dr. Strange. We're not praising the Avengers. We're, we're, we're praising the one and only true and living God. The one and only true and living God. The one that made matter and can break down matter. Yes. 
The one that can break light to make light. Scientists can't even break down light. Scientists can't even break down the atom. Only God can. Whatever God puts up, he can destroy. It's literally too much power to destroy a small kernel of an atom, what we call an atom. But God can. It takes too much engine. It takes too much power to make water. Scientists even try to, but God can. God can make something out of nothing. He made us from the dust of the ground, which was lower than dirt. He made something out of nothing. He made this universe just by speaking. And when he made that life, that life continued to grow and grow. And grow and grow and go and go and go and reveal, 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 and illuminate. That's the type of God we serve. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. That's God. That's God. That's God. Yes. 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 I felt that one. I felt that one. I felt that one. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is taking over. I don't care what pressure America is going through. I don't care what pressure the body of Christ is going through. I'm going against what my notes say. I don't care what pressure the body of Christ is going through. I don't care what pressure the people in America are going through. I don't care if things are shaking up right now. As of late, I believe that things have been shaking up for a while. But we serve a mighty God who's got the last laugh. We serve a mighty God who's got the answer to that equation yeah. after the equal sign. Come on! We serve a God. Come on. We serve a God. We serve a mighty 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 God. Yes, France's economic state went down. Yes, there's persecution going on in I with ISIS. Yes, there was an election that shocked everybody. But we serve a God who has the final say so. Are you with me? And not only did it shock America, but it shocked the entire world. But we serve a God that has a final say so. Yes, things have been shaken. There's been an uneasiness. People are scared. People are protesting their disgust. People need hope. Our hope is in the Lord. Our hope is in God. That's where we invest all of our hope. We don't need to make investments in anything else when we put our hope in the one and only true in living God. Nothing else matters. Everything will be taken care of. Everything is yay and amen. Jesus. Jesus. But if you think about all this that's going on, God allowed it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. He allowed pressure to come upon this land. Yeah. He allowed things, he orchestrated, he allowed it. If he didn't want it to take place, he would have intervened. He's intervened in the past, but he's allowed it to take place. You want to know why? Because when pressure is on or when your life is being shaken, it puts you in a position to rely and depend on him who is bigger than you and the situation you are going through. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Let me repeat it again. He allows pressure to come on you and he allows your life to be shaken up because it puts you in a position to rely on him who is bigger than you and the situation that you're facing. I don't think you heard me, but he allows pressure to come into your life and he allows the pressure to be on because it puts you in a situation to rely on the one who's bigger than everything, who's bigger than this universe, who's bigger than your situation. He's the God who sits on the throne. He's the God that rose again from the dead on the third day taking death, hell, and the grave. That's the mighty God that we serve. Yes. So that pressure puts us in a position to rely on something or someone bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And the situation we're facing, God. That's what hope is. That's what hope is. There's nothing secular about hope. When you look at the definition of hope, everything about hope is divinely inspired. I promise you, let's put the word of God aside and let's just look at the dictionary just to look at it. There's nothing secular about the word hope. Mm 
It's divinely inspired. When we hope, we want something to happen to be true, and we think it's going to happen. Are you with me? When we hope, we cherish a desire with anticipation. Everybody say anticipation. Come on. When we hope, we desire with expectation of obtainment. Everybody say expectation. Come on. When we hope, we expect with confidence. Everybody say expect. There's nothing divine about, there's nothing sexual about this. This is all divine revelation from God himself. When we hope, it's a feeling that comes over us and we're knowing and we're thinking something's going to happen. Something could happen. When we hope, a feeling of something good is going to happen. There's no no correlation between hope and something bad. When we hope on something, something good is about to happen. Everybody say something good. When we hope, the chance of something good will happen. When we hope, we have a chance at it. We're one step closer to that good thing taking place. Are y'all with me? When we hope, we uh, we are putting our hope in something that may be able to provide and help us. Something bigger than us, bigger than the situation we're facing. There's a huge situation that America is facing that puts America in a situation that we have to put our rely on God and God is putting us in a position to say won't you cry out to me so I can heal your land. I can I can heal your sick. I can deliver you. I can set you free. I can make every crooked way straight. I'm putting you in this position because I am waiting for my church to cry out unto me. I don't care about these protests taking place. Protest my name and watch me move. Yeah, hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Protest my name and watch me move. When we hope, we give others a reason to hope. Come on. People need some hope right now. But the spirit of the one and only true and living God is asking us, where is my church? Where is my children? I'm looking for you to be a beacon right now. Your signal should be the strongest signal being broadcast to yes. others. But if you're not praying, if you don't have that hope in me, how can you broadcast that signal? How can that signal be amplified? How can that simply simple signal be amplified? It's through prayer. It's through fasting. It's through supplication. It's through standing on the word. There's a lot of there's a lot of haze going on right now. There's a lot of static going on. But he is looking for a church that is willing to get on their knees and bombard heaven and strengthen that signal. Let's tweak the frequency to align with what the angels are saying. We gotta tweak our frequencies to what to what songs the seraphims are singing around the throne room of God so that when it manifests in the natural our signal is a strong signal going above the noise and making a, pre- a proclamation that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. That's what happens when we hope. Ah. Expectation. Anticipation. This was this what really got me. Something hoped for. That's part of a Bible verse. When we read these three 13 definitions, two words were resonating on the inside of us. Expectation and anticipation. Are you with me? Expectation and anticipation. As we were reading, I bet you there was one word that pricked on the inside of you. Expectation and anticipation coincides with faith. Everybody say faith. When we hope, and when we, we our hope is in God, that is the perfect example of faith. Hope is the secular definition of what faith is, but there's really no difference because nothing, no, there's nothing secular when it comes to hope. It's a divine inspiration. Let's change hope to faith. Our faith, our God. Are uh, y'all in with me? Our faith, our God. So when we, when we put all our chips into the God that we serve, yeah. we will never lose yeah. a bet. We will yeah. never lose a game. We will never be fallen. We will never fall short because our faith yeah. Yeah. is in our God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Repeat after me. Our hope is certain. Our hope, hope is certain. certain. Say it loud and clear. Our hope is certain. Our, our hope, hope is certain. certain. Raise your hand if you knew about the protests. You've seen the protests on the news. Uh, Prophetess Luria, Apostle Luria, talked about the protests when she was praying. You know, protests are going on. People are at ease, right? People are angry. They're protesting. They're disgust. Now, I was doing some research. Protest erupts with the hope that a group of people protesting gets heard 
as a result of hopefully change happening. Are y'all with me? I'll say it again. When people, when a group of people are protesting, they are hoping that their voice gets heard and the result is that change might come. But I want you to understand something. But that hope is a false hope, if you will. Meaning there's no assurance that that goal that they set will accomplish. But our hope that but our hope that we have in our God is a hope that's been backed by insurance of a promise. Come on. When people are protesting in the streets, there is no assurance that their goal will be met. But our hope in the God that we serve is a hope that has been backed by the assurance yes. with insurance of a promise yes. giving us leeway to expect and anticipate yes. that promise coming to pass yes. so you can hope all you want to but if your faith is not in the, is not in the one and only true and living God guess what then all your work is a veil all yes. that protesting is a veil but if you have if you cast your ballot on God if you cast your ballot on Jesus Christ yes. if you pick Cash your ballot on the blood. If you cash your ballot on Calvary, if you cash your ballot on the Holy Spirit, nothing will be held from you. Nothing. Every door will be open. Every window will bust through. And the blessings of God, the favor of God, the right standing of God, the love of God will always surround you. You need proof that our hope slash faith is secure, is certain. Turn to Hebrews 6 quickly. I got to catch my breath because you're going you, you gonna to love this one. Well, that's I need proof. Bet you there's somebody on Facebook right now. I need proof that my hope is certain. First of all, you got to be an heir of the one and only true and living king. If you're not an heir of the one and only true and living king, wait till after service and we'll, we'll take you through the prayer of salvation. You must be a son or a daughter of the one and only true and living God. That makes you an heir. So when you're an heir of the true and living God, your hope is secure. Your hope is certain. I see smiles on your face. I see your spirit man alive. I see another awakening happening in the body of Christ because we are being realigned to what our hope is in, or to whom our hope is in. Our hope is in the blood of Jesus. Our hope is in the Holy Spirit spirit. Our hope is in God. Our hope is in our heavenly father. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are y'all with me? Amen. Repeat that to me. Say it. My hope is certain. My hope is certain. Here's proof. Hebrews 6. Get ready. Like T.P. Jakes. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. You ready. I haven't heard him say that in a while. When he used to say that, I used to get hyped. I was ready. Amen. Hebrews 6. 13 through 20. Here's proof that our hope is certain. It says here in 13, when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater than him to swear by, he swore by himself. Are you with me? Yes. Saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, that was in the other scripture, waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. The only way that he received what was promised, because Abraham was the heir of God. You must be a child of the one and only true and living God in order to be an heir to be connected to his promise. Are you with me? Verse 16. People swear by someone greater than themselves. Didn't the Holy Spirit just say that earlier? I'll read 16 again. People swear by someone greater than themselves and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all arguments. Let me stop right there. So when your hope slash faith is in God, when your hope slash faith is in God, God, there is nothing uh, there is nothing uncertain about it there is nothing uncertain about it you can cast your ballot and it is yay and amen when you cast your ballot on God when you put all your hope and faith in God guess what there is no argument so doubt can't argue with you low self-esteem can't argue with you lack can't argue with you anything that is contrary to the word of God can't argue with you why because our hope is in God. Our hope is in one that is more powerful than we are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. Yes. 
Verse 17. Because what? Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it. Everybody say confirmed. With an oath. Give God a hand clap of praise if you're glad that God is made a holy picture. Verse 18. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope, everybody say hope, hope. set before us may be greatly encouraged. Verse 19, we have this hope, everybody say this hope, it's that is an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become the high priest for forever. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that the heirs of what was promised to us by our Heavenly Father has a hope that has always been backed by the promise with an insurance policy that is never broken? Wait a minute. Do you hear me? You mean to tell me that we have a hope that has always been backed by a promise given by God who can only swear by himself because there's no other greater name than his name? Y'all ain't hearing me. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that we have a hope that is considered yea and amen because God gave us an oath that is firm and secure? Wait a minute. Y'all still ain't hearing me. You mean to tell me that we can take hold of the hope that is set before us and we will be greatly encouraged by it with the assurance that the promise is insured by the very one that gave the promise because he cannot lie? Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that we have a hope that's gone into the inner courts and is where the presence of God resides? The inner courts where Jesus, the son of the one and only true and God, living God has entered and is a seating for us. So be encouraged people of God. We have a hope that will always produce the results because we are expecting and anticipating something to happen with the insurance policy that was solidified that it is going to happen. That is our hope. Amen. That is our hope. High five two people and tell them, forget Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I got a hope insurance plan. I got a hope insurance plan. Hallelujah. And if you believe that, give God a hand clap and a shout. Jesus. 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 Psalms 47 and 11. The Lord delights in those who fear him and put their hope in his unfailing love. He delights in us when we cash all our chips on him. He delights in us when we put all our trust in him. He delights in us and we are open to his unfailing love. The love that covers a multitude of sin. The, a love that drives out all fear. A love that makes every demon tremble. If you want to counteract hate, uh, go into love. Mm -hmm. If you want to counteract fear, go into love. Mm -hmm. If you want to counteract anything that's contrary to the word of God, fall in love with love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise. So we said, now, now that I have proven to you that your hope is certain, because everybody are heirs of the one and only true and living God, let me prove another point. Our hope is reassuring. Everybody say reassuring. reassuring. I want you to turn to that angel right next to you. My hope is reassuring. My hope, My hope is reassuring. Yes, there are angels here. Yes, Tell the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. through you, Holy Spirit, my hope is reassuring. Well, Vincent, I need proof. Cool. Turned, uh, we're still at Hebrews 6. Let's back it up. We're going to read 9 through 12. He had me go backwards. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Verse 9 says, even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. Tell your neighbor there's better things for you. Yeah. 
loud and clear, there are better things for you. The things that have to do with salvation. Salvation makes you the heir of God, which connects you to the promise, which will always be yea and amen, which will always yield results. Amen? Are y'all with me? Here we go, verse 10. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love that you've shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. I hope somebody is encouraged because I felt the Holy Spirit say that God is not forgetting your work, Miss Noel. God is not forgetting the love that you've given other people. That love will not go in vain. I am proud of you, my daughter. I remember your work and that's why you're my daughter. And guess what? Continue to put all your hope in me and I will never steal you wrong you will always be a winner you will always come out on top your hope, your faith is in the right place no need to waver no need to wander, no need to try to look for plan B you got the ultimate plan you got the one and only plan you got the plan that works he is orchestrating everything and working everything out for your good why? because our hope is in God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse 11, we want each of you to show the same diligence and to the very end, everybody must be diligent. Everybody say diligent. diligent. So that you, so that what you hope, everybody say I hope. I hope. So that what you hope may be fully realized. When you stay connected, what you're hoping for will be fully realized. Wait a minute, I thought the word said that faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So through faith, you can cash in on what's not being seen. Because Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 13 just said, your hope, what you hope in, will be realized because you're connected to the right source. Are y'all with me? I'm preaching today. The Holy Spirit is speaking today. Do, uh, we do not want you to become lazy. Tell your neighbor, do not be lazy. But to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what was promised to you. I want you to repeat after me with every fiber of your being. If you're listening on Facebook, I want you to repeat as well. I will not be dismayed. Our hope, our hope, our hope gives me the reassurance that a transaction will always take place because deposits are always being made. The Lord and thy God is already is always depositing in you, depositing his spirit, depositing his gifts, his love, so you can make a transaction anytime you want, because that well will never one run dry, because you have a hope and a source that is never ending, never changing, unchangeable, always abounding. That means it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. So Transactions can continually be made. If you believe it and you receive it, give God a shout. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our hope is certain. Our hope is reassuring. Yes. Last but not least, our hope shakes the place. That, repeat after me. My hope, my hope shakes, the shakes the place. Well, Vince, I need more proof. Okay. Turn to Acts chapter 4, verse 23. There is your proof. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. Our hope shakes the place. There's a lot of shaking going on. There's a lot of, 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 of protest going on. Amen. These protests are doing some shaking. Mm -hmm. It may not yield a, re a, a result, but it's shaking something. Let me tell you something. The wrong people are protesting. Huh. The wrong people are making a shake. Come on. The wrong people are causing ripples. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. The wrong people are making waves. The wrong people are speaking up. 
The wrong people are speaking out. Are you, are you with me? Well, Vince, I need proof. Let me show you right here. Because this is going to correlate what's happening in Chicago and New York and now Los Angeles and other parts of the United States. Our hope shakes the place. So we have a certain hope. We have a certainty in our hope. Because it's backed by an insurance policy that never runs dry. It gives us the reassurance knowing that everything is yea and amen, and he's a, he will come in at the end. As a matter of fact, not only did, did, did he come in at the end, he already came. He's already orchestrated. He's already working out. Are you with me? So we don't have to wait to the end. We can praise God now because he is already ordering our steps. He is already putting the chess pieces where they need to be made, and pretty soon uh, God Almighty is going to tell the devil checkmate checkmate on the lack that is running in your life that's trying to run throughout your life checkmate on the low self esteem that's trying to riddle your mind checkmate on uh, on the thoughts of suicide that's trying to bombard your mind I want you to praise God because he's about to checkmate on the enemy he's about to checkmate and counteract he's about to put those pawns where they need to be so that horse can't move he's about to put that bishop where he needs to be so those pawns he, he has got the orchestrated game. He knows how to move the chess yeah. pieces in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So our hope, our hope, hope shakes the place. Shakes the place. Shakes the Here's your proof. Acts 4, starting at verse 23. The believers started to pray. Verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. Now, if you guys don't remember that story, they did some mighty things for God and the people of Israel turned on them and they were put in prison. But then when they were released, they went back to their people. They went back to the church. They told them what the priests had done and said. When, and here, here it is, verse 24. When they heard this, they raised their voices together and prayer to God. Are you hearing me? They said, Sovereign Lord. They said, You made the heavens and you made the earth and you made the sea and everything in them. 25. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, uh, our father David. Why do these nations rage and the people's plot in vain? Why is the people in America raging and plotting in vain? Why are people in power raging and plotting in vain? Why do the rages of the nation and the people's plot in vain. Verse 26, the kings of the earth raise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against the anointed one. Verse 27, indeed, Herod Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. 29, now Lord everybody say now Lord everybody should have a now Lord prayer a now Lord word a now Lord declaration a now Lord affirmation a now Lord proclamation they said now Lord consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness everybody say great boldness stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus after they pray the place that they were meeting in started to shake and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of the Lord with boldness. So people of the one and only true and living God when you boldly proclaim that what needs to manifest on the earth realm that hope has been activated on the inside of you that hope manifests results that hope ensures and reassures the people in the village were praying while Peter and John were locked up the pressure was on things looked a little uncertain but they had a hope come on turn to your neighbor and say I have that hope that hope that delivers and set free that hope that breaks every chain that hope that, that shook the very place that you were in that hope that endowed them with power we have a hope that is unmovable because last time I checked in 1 Corinthians 15 therefore brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So when the people pray, they pray with boldness because they had a hope. Come on. They pray with conviction because they had a hope. So we, the body of Christ, should be praying with so much conviction because we have our hope in the right place. We should be bombarding the streets and activating others and giving them the hope that they Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Stay there. Stay there. Thank you, Lord. Stay there. Thank you, Lord. Everybody's taking a mannequin challenge right now. You'll see it all over Facebook. Come on, this is going to get you because this got me. When you look at a mannequin, it's secure in the platform it's in, whether it be the ground or a little stand. It's that mannequin is bolted in. And believe it or not, even though that mannequin is not moving, that mannequin is sending you a message. That mannequin is broadcasting a signal. If that mannequin has a tight outfit on, it gives you a signal yeah, I look good in that outfit and then you end up spending a hundred dollars buying that outfit, <laughs> outfit just because the mannequin standing there broadcasting a signal, I dare you to take the mannequin challenge of prayer prayer allows you to stand firm in God and makes the situation that you have change come on, you're not moving but the situation you're facing is moving, because you're standing firm you're flat footed you're standing on this world. You're steadfast. You're unmovable because you have a hope. That's real. That's real. You have a hope. Take that mannequin challenge of releasing to God. Psalms 37 and 5. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust him and he will act. You don't have to move. You don't have to name it. You don't have to walk. All you got to do is stand. The Hebrew boys, all they did was stand. Yeah. They didn't even have to pray because yeah. they already prayed. Yeah. All they did was stand in the midst and the God, their father, stood with them. Uh, Daniel, when he was thrown into the lion's bed, then he didn't have to feed the lions. All he did was stand. He stood in prayer. He stood in praise. They both had a hope. And guess what? Just like Psalm 37 and 5, he acted. Ah. He moved. Yeah. He transformed. Yeah. He changed. Thank you, when your hope is in God, you don't have to move. Everything else will move around you. When your faith is in God, that mountain moves. Just a mustard seed size faith. You don't have to do much. When your hope is in God, all you have to do is stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. They, the, the Israelites didn't have buckets. All they had to do was stand and the Red Sea parted because they stood flat footed in a mannequin uh, stance of prayer. They stood flat footed and they were like this. However long it took, it says in the Bible that the Red Sea didn't open instantly. It uh, The Red Sea opened over over a amount of days. So just think over those course of days that it took for the Red Sea to part. They were standing in a mannequin sense of praying unto God. Some may have been undoubted, but Moses was looking up to God, keeping his finger on God, keeping his thought on God. He wasn't moving. He was making a signal. He was sending a message. Say, God, you better talk to every element. You better, you better talk to the elements and cause this thing to move because you got to get your people to the other side. God has taken you to the other side because you have a hope. And if you believe that, give God a shout of Please stand. In closing, please stand. Brother, I want you to look up that song, Bethel. Music, come to me. It's on Spotify. I want you to play that song. Lift up your hands and close your eyes. I want you to listen to these words. This is a song of hope. This is a benediction right here. 
more than ever before. When you come to God, you're casting your ballot. When you come to God, you're casting that hope. You're casting that hope. You're casting that hope. When you come to him. When you come to him, you cast that hope. It will always yield results. The album is called You Make Me Brave. The song has come to me. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. 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 Perfect. Thank you, brother. Lift up your hands if you can. I want you to listen to the words. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. This was ringing in my spirit all week. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you what area in your life he wants to heal. You can turn up just a little bit. That would be perfect. Cast your hope. Cast your hope on him. Cast it. We don't need to hope in anything else. Cast your hope. You need peace. Cast it. Evil will try to come, but he said, come to me. God a hand clap of praise if you are blessed today. Does anybody need to recommit their life to Jesus Christ? 